subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening welcome to South Asia News Line I'm Uzma Jafri here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday the 4th of February India's covid-19 death toll surpasses 500000 mark recovery rate at 95.39% Tibetans in India hold protests hunger strike against Beijing Olympics Pakistan PM visits China to reinforce strategic ties likely to seek more loans. And now for all the details. India's official COVID-19 death toll crossed 500,000 on Friday as it is currently in the midst of a third wave of the coronavirus led by the Omicron variant. As cases have declined in major cities, authorities in capital New Delhi announced easing of restrictions including phased reopening of schools from next week. India's official COVID-19 death toll crossed 500,000 on Friday after 1,072 deaths were reported in the last 24 hours. The country, which has the fourth highest tally of deaths globally, had recorded 400,000 deaths by July 2021 after the devastating Delta variant-driven second wave. While the COVID-19 recovery rate has improved to 95.39 percent and infections have declined in major cities. Authorities in capital New Delhi on Friday announced further easing of restrictions including phased reopening of schools, gyms and spas. While the timing of the night curfew have also been reduced by 1 hour, all restaurants in the city will now be allowed to open till 11 pm. फिलहाल 7 तारीख से 9वीं से 12वीं के स्कूल खुलेंगे और वो हाइब्रिड क्लासेस भी चलती रहेंगी उनकी 8वीं क्लास या उससे नीचे नर्सरी से आठवीं क्लास तक के स्कूल उसके अगले हफ्ते से खोल दिए जाएंगे अगले मंडे से यानी कि 14 तारीख से हेल्थ एक्सपर्ट्स से दी करंट ओमिक्रॉन ड्रिवन थर्ड वेव इज ऑलरेडी इन कम्युनिटी ट्रांसमिशन इन इंडिया व्हाइल फेडरल ऑफिशियल्स से मोस्ट केसेस आर माइल्ड एंड हॉस्पिटलाइजेशंस हैव बीन वेरी लो अराउंड 65% ऑफ द एडोलसेंट्स इन द 15 टू 18 एज ग्रुप नेशन वाइड हैव रिसीव्ड देयर फर्स्ट डोज ऑफ कोविड-19 वैक्सीन the health ministry said Tibetans in India on Friday held protests and hunger strike as they joined global demonstrations to call for boycott of the Winter Olympics in Beijing over China's alleged human rights abuses in Tibet and the majority Muslim Xinjiang region China denies any rights violations and says it opposes the politicization of sports Exalt the patents in India on Friday held protests in unison with demonstration being held worldwide to call for boycott of the Winter Olympics in Beijing over China's alleged human rights abuses in Tibet and the majority Muslim Xinjiang region. China's treatment of minorities has come under increased scrutiny in the run up to the games scheduled from February 4 to 28. Protesters in New Delhi said they fear awarding China to host the games would encourage it to increase repression and mass abuses against Uyghur Muslims, Tibetans and other ethnic groups and religious minorities. So we uh, urge the international community to make China accountable for their continuous atrocities and we urge the participating athlete uh, at least to show us the support and solidarity by returning their medal uh, which we call as a um, blood stain medal. Meanwhile activists of students for free Tibet also held a hunger strike in India's northern Dharamsala town claiming China is not fit to host the prestigious Olympic games. Uh, to this uh, protest also is a symbol of um, you know letting China know that uh, we haven't forgotten yet because as soon as IOC like awarded the uh, opportunity to host the Beijing Olympics to China we all know the situation inside Tibet has only worsened. 
China sent troops into mountainous Tibet in 1950 in what it officially terms a peaceful liberation and activists blame it has ruled there with an iron feast ever since. Beijing is also accused of facilitating forced labor by detaining around a million Uyghurs in camps since 2016. China has denied any rights abuses and has said it opposes the politicization of sports. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan on Friday held a series of meetings with Chinese government officials and state-owned and private companies as he began his four-day official visit to China. The visit is crucial as Pakistan hopes to seek more loans and investments while its external account deficit has widened amid an ongoing economic crisis. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan arrived in Beijing late on Thursday night for a four-day official visit to reinforce strategic ties and attend the opening ceremony of the Beijing Winter Olympic Games on Friday. Khan began the visit with virtual meetings with a Chinese delegation on Friday and reviewed the progress of ongoing projects which are part of China-Pakistan Economic Corridor and discussed preparations for future initiatives, his office informed. He also held a series of meetings with leaders of China's leading state-owned and private companies. Earlier, Finance Minister Shokat Tarin had said exploring economic opportunities, including trying to persuade Chinese businesses to set up in Pakistan, would be on Khan's agenda. Economically, it was important because we are China to say that you are help us आप अपनी इंडस्ट्री को बाहर मुल्कों में लेके जा रहे हैं और आप अपनी इंडस्ट्री को पाकिस्तान में भी रिलोकेट करें This comes as Pakistan is grappling with a record high inflation that has put Imran Khan under increasing pressure Foreign inflows are critical to Pakistan's economy given that its external account deficit had widened on the back of soaring global commodity prices particularly oil which makes up about a third of the country's payments Moving on Think Tank International Forum for Rights and Security has stated in a report that the newly formed Baloch Nationalist Army has provided fresh impetus to the disgruntled people of Balochistan province and has become a challenge for Pakistan. Ethnic Baloch separatists have been fighting the government for decades for a separate state, saying Pakistan has been unfairly exploiting Balochistan's resources and committing war crimes. <laughs> Think Tank International Forum for Rights and Security has noted in its latest report that the amalgamation of two outlawed Baloch separatist organizations, United Baloch Army and Balochistan Republican Army into Baloch Nationalist Army or BNA has provided fresh impetus to the disgruntled people of Balochistan province in Pakistan. There has been a spate in attacks by Baloch separatists in the province posing a challenge for Pakistani state. Interior Minister Sheikh Rashid Ahmed said on Thursday that the army successfully repulsed nighttime attacks on two bases that killed four soldiers and 15 insurgents. Ethnic Baloch guerrillas have been fighting the government for decades for a separate state, saying Islamabad along with China has been unfairly exploiting Balochistan's rich gas and mineral resources under the garb of CPEC, the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor project. Rights activists also blame thousands of Baloch people have been killed or arbitrarily detained by the Pakistan military for raising their voices against its atrocities and the CPEC. Earlier on January 20, BNA also claimed a blast in Lahore city that killed at least three people. The separatists usually attack government interests or Chinese projects in Balochistan province bordering Afghanistan and Iran, but an attack in a city like Lahore was rare. The United Nations Assistance Mission in Afghanistan has demanded the Taliban to provide information on two more women activists detained by the group this week. Ever since seizing power on August 15 last year, the Islamist group have cracked down on dissent by forcefully dispersing women's rallies and detaining critics. The United Nations on Thursday sought urgent information from the Taliban on the latest detentions of two women activists this week. Taking to Twitter, the United Nations Assistance Mission in Afghanistan reiterated its call to release the detained activist in the war-ravaged nation. 
Reports suggest that the woman was taken from her home by force recently after she participated in protest while the other was arrested after she took part in rallies demanding equal rights for women. The latest detentions come less than a month after two women activists went missing after participating in a Kabul protest. The Taliban denied any knowledge of their whereabouts and said they were investigating the matter. Meanwhile, calling the detentions unjust, U.S. Special Envoy to Afghanistan Reena Amidi said, if the Taliban seek legitimacy from the Afghan people and the world, they must respect Afghans' human rights, especially for women. Fears for the safety of vocal opponents of the Taliban and prominent women have risen since the Islamist group took over the country in August as foreign forces withdrew. Many civil society and women's rights activists fled the country. Earlier this week, the UN Human Rights Office again stated that it was very alarmed over the continued disappearances of people connected with the recent women's rights protest. The Taliban say they have an amnesty for previous opponents, including Afghan military members, and that they respect women's rights in line with Islamic law and customs. But many human rights advocates and foreign diplomats remain skeptical. State-owned petroleum supplier Nepal Oil Corporation this week increased fuel prices yet again, making the prices of petrol, diesel and kerosene all-time high. Hitting the streets against the move, the student wing of Opposition Communist Party of Nepal Unified Marxist-Leninist burned an effigy of Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Deoba during a protest on Thursday, demanding reduction in the prices. Members of the All Nepal National Free Students Union, the student wing of Opposition Communist Party of Nepal Unified Marxist Leninist, took to the streets of capital Kathmandu on Thursday to protest against the recent increase of fuel prices in the country, which have reached record high. They also burned the effigy of Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Deoba at Tri Chandra College campus during the protest, as Nepali police were seen trying to control the crowd. Some protesters also hurled stones at policemen who tried to clear the blocked road. The price of petroleum products has reached an all-time high in Nepal as the state-owned petroleum supplier, Nepal Oil Corporation, increased the price past Tuesday midnight, owing to losses incurring from the sales. Nepal Oil Corporation announced increment in prices of petrol, diesel and kerosene by 3 rupees per litre. And with new adjustments, a litre of petrol in Nepal would now cost 142. Diesel and kerosene would cost 125 rupees a litre. Earlier on 14 March 2014, the NOC had hiked the fuel price to 140 rupees per litre and it had remained low since then. Nepal Oil Corporation has been updating the price of petroleum after it gets the revised rate from Indian Oil Corporation every fortnight. It has not increased the price of cooking gas for now. A youth in India's northern Jammu in Kashmir installed flour mill in his home district Rajori to provide employment opportunities to the youngsters. Today, over 50 unemployed youngsters are working in this flour mill to earn their livelihood. The mill is providing employment to the locals who do not have to venture to town or cities for job opportunities. <music> A few years ago, a Kashmiri youth installed a flour mill in Rajori district of India's Jammu and Kashmir to provide employment opportunities to the youngsters. The flour mill in Sarano village today has opened doors for many unemployed locals who do not have to venture to other towns or cities in search of jobs. This flour mill is the first such mill in the district. Owner of the mill, Sunny Raina, proudly says that his venture today provides employment to 50 to 55 people. Also before the mill, the residents of Rajori districts earlier used to purchase flour or atta from neighbouring districts or outside the state. But now, they get it directly from his mill. This has also reduced their transportation costs. Raina procures raw wheat locally and supplies flash flour. Our mill has about 50 पचपन आदमी जो अभी आप में नीचे देखा होगा कि यहाँ पे काम कर रहे हैं। उनमें कुछ विडोज लेडीज भी हैं, जिनसे आप नीचे देखा होगा कि वो काम कर रहे हैं। यहाँ पे लेवर के जो लोडिंग और लोडिंग के आदमी हैं, और आपने और भी देखा होगा कितना स्टाफ है अंदर जो यहाँ पे काम कर रहा है। इस मिल से 
काफ़ी लोगों को फ़ायदा हुआ है पहले यहाँ के लोग बाहर जाके मिलों में काम करते थे लोकल लोग यहाँ के बाहर जाते थे अब इनके घर के पास अपनी रोजी कमाने के लिए रोजगार लग गया यहाँ पे According to the mill owner, during the initial days of the pandemic, it was difficult to procure wheat and supply flour to the people. But with the help of the administration, all problems were sorted out. Jammu and Kashmir government in recent years has introduced several programs and schemes to benefit youngsters in different streams and provide employment opportunities. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com/sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.